Just read it out loud. Yeah. Allen's Prairie Styles Insurance Card grew 40% to 56000 in one month. What was the balance at the beginning of the month? Okay. All right. So it, you gave the important information here. I just wanted to know the problem. Okay. So here's the deal. Is this standard or work backward? Work backward. Did everybody sign the attendance sheet? Okay, you guys come and get it and, and sign it. So if, if I seem a little if I seem a little tight today, it's it's more of it's not you, it's what we have to cover. And and like I said, we can't get distracted, we can't have story time, I don't want to get on tangents, we can't, we've got to teach you a lot of information. Okay? And what we don't and what you don't get, you're gonna have to watch a video about it. Okay? Well, I'm making the video right now, so we gotta get her done. Okay? Sounds good. All right, so here's the deal. Standard or work backward? What are you saying? Work backward. Work backward. Okay. How do you know it's work backward? <clears throat> I think one of the things that I want you to understand is we talked about in the percent problem realm, right? So here we have, I think this pen kind of stinks. Missed. Um, so Percent or the word percent is the identifier for a percent problem. Agreed? So as soon as we see this percent sign right here, we know it's a percent problem. And then we said, well, there's two kinds. There's the standard and there's the work backward. I had one student this morning that, that was confused a little bit. And, and I thought, wow, that's a really good point he brings up. And the point he brought up was he thought that you, you worked every problem in the standard and then if you needed to go further, you did this. Uh-uh, it's one or the other. It's not this, then this. It's either standard or work backward. So this is some total number. Do you have this in your notes? Yes. Yes. The last time, total number times percent equals part number. This is an original amount plus or minus a change to that amount equals a new total. And we went hypersonic on expressing to you that, that change is always a percent times the original amount. So if this is x, this is going to be an addition or subtraction of a percent times x. Now the additional identifiers for work backward were words like you know pre, original, you know, regular, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I want you to take the identification a step further. The very essence of the name, work backward. We know the end result. We're looking to find out what was the beginning situation. That's why it's called work backward. We know that Harry Styles' balance was $56,000 on his credit card. But what was his balance at the beginning. That's what constitutes it being a work backward. We know the end amount. We're going back. What was the beginning amount? Cool? So we're going to take original amount plus or minus a change to that amount equals a new total. What was the original amount? It is x. We don't know. That's the x. Are we adding or subtracting? Well, what word in here tells you if we're adding or subtracting? What word? Grew. Grew. So that's a what? Add. That's an add. add. Okay? And we're changing this by what percent? 43. And so what do we write right here? What's our change? 0. 0. 0. 0.4 what? X. X. 0. 0.40 X or 0.4 X. Very good. I'm so grateful that you said X at the end of that. Okay? We're not adding 40 cents. If we got rid of the X, we'd just be adding 40 cents. Does that, does that make sense? Well, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense, right? It makes sense that that's correct, what I'm saying, but if it doesn't make sense, we're only going to add 40 cents, okay? It's 40% of X. And this equals his new total. What's his new balance? 56,000. That's 56,000. So the question was, what was the balance to begin with? We're working backward in time. I'm going to show you something really interesting. Everybody pay attention to this, all right? Does, does Harry Styles have 100% in, well, it is his balance at 100% of the original amount, yes or no? Yes. 
Listen, 100 doesn't mean all. Okay, sometimes we think, give 100%, right? And so we have this idea in our head that 100% means all, okay? Bull crap, okay? All means all, people. So 100 means 100. If it's more than 100 or less than 100, it ain't 100. So is his balance 100% of what it was in the beginning? Yes or no? Yeah. What is it percent-wise? Say it loud. 140%. What's 140% converted to a decimal? Okay, so I'm going to show you guys something really fascinating. We're going to do this a couple of times. 56,000 divided by 1.4 will always give you your answer. Okay? So we come in here. X and 0.4X makes 1.40X equals 56,000. Who's sharing size with X? 1.4. We cancel. We divide by 1.4. Look, at these two are the same. So we do that on our calculator. Go ahead. You do it 40, quickly. 40,000. 40,000? So this equals $40,000, all right? Okay, Gentile. Gentile asks a girl out on a date. He spends $65 on dinner with her. This must be love, okay? I don't think I've ever spent $65 on anybody unless I was married to them or I had a ring on it, okay? So, $65, okay? You're listening to this. We're not writing anything down. $65, we'll see what you can do here. Ride this train with me. $65, and that was everything that you spent. That included the tip. What was the cost of the meal? The cost of the meal is just the cost of the food. What was the tip? Could you give us the tip? 20% tip. Okay, question. Standard, work backward. Why? You're trying to find the original amount. You're trying to find the original amount. That's where the word original comes up. Very good. But even if they don't use the word before, original, pre, regular, it's work backward because we know the end. We're working backward to find out what did, was the beginning. When he got handed the bill, what was the cost of the meal? Then he tagged on 20%, and he, we know he spent 65 bucks. Because in the end, that's all that's on his credit card statement, $65. He's like, well, how much did the meal cost? Okay? All right, ready for this? Did Gentile pay 100% of the cost of the meal? Well, you're starting to learn. 100 doesn't mean all. 100 means 100. He paid less or more. more. What percent did Gentile pay? 120 percent. Convert 120 to a decimal. 1.2. And what did he pay? 54 dollars. No, 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 no. What did he pay? 65. He paid 65. So what are we going to do with those two numbers? 1.2 and 65. 65 divided by 1.2. Do it on your calculator. What I'm trying to teach you. I want all of you to do this. Go. Come on. I don't just want one of you. I want all of you to see this. 65 divided by 1.2. $54.66. 54 what? 54 .16. Yeah, he paid, so the, the, he paid 65, but the cost of the meal was 54.16. You see how fast that was? But look up here. We return to this, okay? Original amount, okay? If we reword this, it's the cost of the meal. Plus a change, plus or minus a change, well, the change is plus a tip equals a new total, right? Okay, that equals the total cost. Well, we know the total cost was 65, but the cost of the meal is what we don't know, and he spent 20% of the meal on the tip. So that makes 1.2x equals 65. We divide by 1.2, we divide by 1.2. Instead of writing all that down, I'm just telling you, you can go right there, boom, okay? So I've got a student asking me, hey, how can I make this faster? And I'm saying, listen to this. I'm trying to help you make it faster, okay? I want all of you to be able to make this faster. Okay, let's do another one. All right. Faye. Faye goes online shopping. And Faye likes clothes. You like clothes, Faye? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can tell. Okay? <laughs> kind of like I like shoes. You can tell. Okay? Faye likes clothes. So he buys, okay, he buys a bunch of clothes online. But it's a... President's Day Super Sale weekend, and he gets 
60% off everything he purchased. He spends $140. How much were all the items worth combined? Standard or work backward? So we're backward. We know how much he spent. How much did he spend? How much did he spend? 140. He spent 140 bucks. Okay? He spent 140 bucks. He got a discount of what? 60%. 60% off. So here's what happens when people don't think. They multiply 60% times 140. 140 has already been reduced by 60%. That's when you start acting like it's a standard problem. Work backward. Did they spend pay 100% of the cost of the items? No. no. Now think, what percent did he pay? Say it loud. 40, he didn't pay 60, he paid 40. Okay, you have everything you need to do this problem. You see, notice what I did. I didn't ask you what was the discount, I asked you what he paid. Notice, with Gentile, I didn't ask you, you know, what was his tip, I asked you, you know, what percent did he pay, right? It's percent paid, it's the actual percent that is applied that you divide it by. So now, what are you gonna do with those two numbers? Well, you change 60% to what? 40%, because that's what he paid, and what are you gonna do with 40% and 140? Okay, so you're gonna take 140 and divide it by what? 0. 0.40. Do it! <clears throat> huh? Dude! Faye is a shopping fool. He got $350 worth of items for 140 bucks. You good? Work backward. Make more sense? Now, let's rewrite this. Let's rewrite this real quick, okay? What was the original amount? Let's pretend we don't know. What was it? X, okay. And are we adding or subtracting the change? Subtracting because it was a discount of what? 60%. 60%. That's how we came up with 40 in our heads. We just did this math. Equals, what's our new total? That's what he paid, which is $140. So we want to work backwards to what was the value of the items before the discount was applied. And so this makes 1x minus 0.6x makes 0.4x equals 140, divide by 0.4, divide by 0.4. Do you see now where we came up with this? Does that make those a little easier to understand? Or not really? You can be honest with me. Like you confused the H out of me, Brother Rich, and I don't mean heck. <laughs> yeah. So if it's subtraction, are we subtracting, let's say 60 from 100? Mm -hmm. And then if it's addition, we're adding 20? Yeah, because if it's a tip, you know, it's just, it, now, now the story comes into play, right? So we we add a tip, we add sales tax, we subtract the discount, you know, we subtract a, 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 a fee, you know, a penalty, you know, right. like, you know, something like that, right? But a hundred's like our, our core. A hundred is a core, and you know why? You know why? Starting value. Starting value is always 100% of itself. That's very good, starting value. Way to say that, that was perfectly stated. The original amount is always 1x. What's one in percent? 100%, right? We start out as 100% of ourselves, then we're either adding or subtracting from that value. Very good, very good, yes? Just as I was going through all like the extra credit and everything, I noticed that um, if you want it to be bigger than the number, you gotta have it be divided by the smaller than one whole number, like as a whole number. Right. And if you want it to be uh, uh, the opposite, Right, right. Okay, let's do this problem right here and then we gotta move on. From November 2018 to 2021, the price of Bitcoin grew 1,035.35% to 65,496. So you had a problem just like this in the standard section, but this one's a work backward one. And it's really fascinating because the only word that changed was that, right there, the two. Because if I tell you I grew 1,035.35% or, instead of two, I made or, and then I told you what I, my growth was, $57,000, or something like that. Now it's a standard problem, okay? This is work backward. It's fun to take the two problems and compare them and contrast them next to each other. But we don't have time right now to do that, so we're just gonna quickly do this problem. 
Why is this a work backward problem? Because we know what we grew to, but we want to know what the price of Bitcoin was back in the beginning. Now, the other problem also wants to know what the price of Bitcoin was back in the beginning, but now it just read number two. Give me number two quickly. I just I, I just am, I, I can't resist. But these pens, these red pens, I don't know about these red pens. I'm tired of these red pens. They're kind of tired. You said this is a work backward. This one is, yes. So it says from November 2018 to November 2021, the price of Bitcoin grew $59,727. $727? Yeah, in 21 cents. In 21 cents? Or 1,035.35%. Uh-huh. Um, what was the price of Bitcoin in November 2018? Okay. I was just looking for two in the standard part. This one's in the standard. This one's in the work backward. Okay. They're the exact same problem with... One difference is saying this one this one grew this amount, but this one it grew to this amount. Okay? Yeah. Pay attention to this. Let's do this problem real quick here. Okay, this one right here. Do these numbers matter in our data? Yes or no? No. no. Nope. Okay. So we end up with 10.3535 when it comes to percent. We cool with that? I'm, I'm converting it to a decimal. Are you okay with that? And, um, I, and my total is 65,496. This is my total value at the end. So it's work backward because I know what I, my value is at the end. I want to know where do we start with. We're so used to percents being less than 100 that this problem kind of confuses us because we're so used to this. But if you get into cryptocurrency, it might be good to understand this too. All percents aren't necessarily working from an un under 100 standpoint. That's a thousand thirty-five percent. Okay, it's unreal. Okay, <clears throat> there are some interesting facts going on here. This isn't just make believe. This happened in this three-year stretch of time. Okay, so watch this. Um, original amount plus or minus a change to that amount equals our new total. What is our new total, everybody? $65,496. What's our original amount? Oh, it's X. And we are adding or subtracting. Grew, so that's a plus. And we have 10.3535X. Now this is problem number 14, isn't it? And I did send out a message. The answer in the back was wrong. Okay, our apologies for that. Okay, we actually accidentally divided this by ten point three five three five instead of eleven point three five. They didn't add the original value of x. X plus this makes eleven point three five three five x equals sixty five four nine six. We divide by eleven point three five three five, and we divide by eleven point three five three five. X equals 5,768.79. All right. If you invested just under $6,000 in November of 2018, three years later, you would have had just under $66,000 in your account when it came to Bitcoin. Pretty unreal. Pretty unreal. Okay. Back in the day, like 2008, people bought Bitcoin for pennies, and they became billionaires during the stretch of time. Pretty crazy, huh? Cryptocurrency, at the time that anybody purchased it for pennies, was considered way out there. A very sketch investment. Those guys became billionaires. Pretty crazy. So look at this. So why is this problem a standard problem? Number is it number two? Yeah. Okay. Because it says that from November 2018 to 2021, the price of Bitcoin grew fifty-nine thousand seven hundred twenty-seven dollars and twenty-one cents, or a thousand thirty-five thirty-five. Take sixty-five four nine six right now. Take sixty-five four nine six and subtract fifty-seven sixty-eight seventy-nine, please. What do you get? Fifty-nine 
You get that right there. So how come? Well, here's the deal. Total number times a percent equals a part number. Let's think about this. If I tell you, look at me. If I tell you that my son is 72 inches tall <coughs> and over the summer, okay, he grows an additional 5%, okay? Well, how much did he grow? Then in the summer, what are you gonna do? He he currently he's 72 inches tall, but this summer he's gonna grow. He's gonna grow five percent. How much will he grow? 3.6. 3.6. Okay, so 3.6 inches. What is his top? What is his height after the summer? Okay. All right, here we go. We have no problem with that. Agreed? Ready for this? If I tell you, look at me. And I, I don't tell you about 72 inches, and I don't tell you about 3.6 inches, and I tell you that he grew, actually, I'll lie to you. I'll tell you he grew 3.6 inches, or 5%. What was his height, you know, you know, before the growth? And you can say, well, brother, that has the word before in it. Isn't it a word backward? Well, look at this. Total number is what? It, you, you know it's 72, but here's the deal. It's X because you don't know it. And then you multiply that by point, you know, 0 0.036, and it equals 3.6 inches. I'm sorry, 0 0.05. I'm getting that out of my mind. 0 0.05, <laughs> that's the percent. I was looking at the wrong one. And then we divide this, look at this, divide this by 0 0.05. What's 3.6 divided by 0 0.05? 72. It's 72. It's 72. Because look at me. We never told you how tall he was at the end. You can't work backward unless you have the end knowledge. We didn't have the end knowledge. I didn't say he's 75.6 inches tall. I don't say in this problem that we have $65,496. I tell you, this is our growth. Growth is just a part of the total. But in this instance, the growth is bigger than the total because of it being over 100%. We're so used to our percents being less than 100, we can't handle this. Look at this. We come back to this. My total number is X. I don't know what Bitcoin was, but I know it grows 10.3535%, uh, correct? Yes. And that's going to equal the growth, which is 59727.21. They tell you what the growth is. They don't tell you what the total is. So I can't work backward unless I have right the new total, the new amount. I don't have the new amount. Well, if I divide this by 10.3535 and this by 10.3535, what do you get? X equals, go. Help me. Do it on your calculator. Your calculator. Is that what you get on a calculator? 59727.21. Divided by 10.3535. Yeah. Do you get this? Yeah. And that is the original amount, again, but done differently in a standard way. You guys good? Okay. All right, we got to move on. We got 30 minutes to cover the world. So that was a review of percent problems. Raise your hand if that helped you a little. Okay? Raise your hand if you're as confused as H about all of this. Raise your hand. That's okay. Keep working. Keep working. The good news is the more you do, the better you get. It's just the bottom line. Okay? I had a girl that played ball for me years ago. She was super fast. Lots of skills when it came to athletic ability. No basketball skill whatsoever. Couldn't make a layup to save her life. You know? She'd steal the ball and run up the court and break away from everybody because she was so fast. And then she'd go to lay that ball up and boom, and that ball would go boom off the backboard and boom, about 20 feet back. The other team would get it, run down, and go score. Okay? This went on for months. She's awesome now. Okay? It takes time sometimes, right? So for those of you who are struggling, guess what? You have the ability. You do. You do. It will come, okay, in time. Just keep working on it. Feel sick today? A little bit. I'm sorry. Okay. Join me for our next word problem types. We're gonna fill in these, these charts. So the first chart here, 
is the geometry word problem type, okay? Identifiers, okay? I'm gonna do this chart with you, here we go. Okay, identifiers. So maybe the most important identifier is shapes. So in geometry, if I tell you I have a circle, a triangle, a rectangle, etc. I have a geometry problem. So the percent problem is the easiest of all of them to identify because it's just one word, one symbol. Geometry is the second easiest. It's just there's lots of words that could be involved here. The next one is what we call measurements. Okay? And this one I'm going to put a double star by. It might be the most important. And it's stuff like perimeter and angle and um, na, 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 uh, area. area, thank you, and volume. And angle really isn't um, a measurement, it's more of a dimension. However, it, it also can function as both. So I'd like to take that cross out of there, rewrite it, and say it, it goes both ways. It can be a dimension or it can be a measurement. Uh, dimensions are things like length and width and height, and again, angle, right? Those are just examples. I'm not gonna write every single shape and every single dimension and every single measurement. You get the gist, agreed? <coughs> the given. The given, once again, is the hard part, it's the plan. And these are given as formulas. Now, these are geometry problems, and so these are geometry formulas. I'm not going to write every geometry formula ever created, but the five that you were supposed to memorize will, are, the reason you're supposed to memorize them is because these are the emphases in algebra. And so we have area of a rectangle equals length times width. Perimeter of a rectangle equals 2L plus 2W. The area of a triangle equals 1 half BH. Uh, the perimeter of a triangle equals side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3. And 180 degrees equals angle one plus angle two plus angle three for all triangles, okay? Those five are going to be the great emphasis that we make in the rest of this semester and in this section of this chapter. These are the five you need to know, okay? Will there be other ones? Possibly, okay? But any geometric formula is game for a geometry word problem. I also want you to leave some space down here to write the following, but I'm going to write it up here so I don't have to scrunch it into this little thing. In geometry problems, they like to use comparison statements. An example would be the length is twice the width. The length is twice the width. That's a comparison statement because they're comparing length to width. I want you to drop your pens and pencils for a moment. This is imperative. Raise your hand if you find word problems challenging. Then look up here. Don't look at your paper. You'll have time to write this down or at least take a picture of it. If you see the length is twice the width in a word problem or any kind of a comparison statement, the first thing you need to do is you need to write it on your paper all on one line, and then you need to do what we call drop down translate. You've heard this before, you've seen this before. We just did it with is of what problems, we did it with other algebraic translations earlier in the semester. So we take this, the length, what are we going to call the length? What do you want to call it? L. I like, what does is mean? Equals. Twice? What is twice? Two. Two what? Two plus? Two divided? Two times? What? Two times. Two times. What's the width? W. W. Now that might seem extra simple to you. However, if you don't write it on one line and drop down translate it, I guarantee that at least 50% of the time you'll get that two over here. You'll get it in the wrong place. Make sure you do this. The second thing is this. Whenever you're given a series of multiple unknowns, okay, 
I want you to remember this. We always, always start with X. Everybody say this. We always start with X. We always start with X. Louder. We always start with X. Repeat. We always start with X. One more time. We always start with X. What do we start with? And don't you fetch and forget it. Because that's going to come back to help you or haunt you if you don't remember it, okay? What do we start with? X. When? Always. Good. Okay. We need to do this problem up here. I'm going to raise this board on the left. We're going to work on this problem about a home in a triangular backyard. I had one young lady this morning say, that is weird. And you know what's crazy? I actually almost bought a home when I first moved to Rexburg over 25 years ago. I almost bought a, a home with a triangular backyard. So, just the way that street crossed in front of it and just the way the other lots were designed, it had a triangular backyard. Okay. A home has a triangular backyard. The second angle of the triangle is 15 degrees more than the first angle. Okay, first thing I want you guys to do here, D, V, P, and E. What's our plan? What's our plan with this problem? You gotta find the angles, because that, that the one angle that moves this, find the angles. So we gotta find the angles, but the plan is the geometric formula that we have to memorize. What formula do we have to use? 180 equals what? Help me. Just tell me. A1 plus A2 plus A3. That's right. Do you know, if this is the hardest part of the problem, the plan, you already know it right now. So that's awesome. So write that down immediately if you're taking this. Look at me. As soon as I read this problem, come back over here. A home has a triangular. As soon as I see triangular, ding, 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 it's a geometry problem. Right? Got a percent sign, it's a percent problem. I start talking about shapes, triangular, it's a geometry problem. Pretty easy to identify. And then I see triangular, and they're talking about angle measurements. Look over here. The only, look at, these two were out, rectangles. These three, triangular, were in as soon as I saw triangular. As soon as I see the word angle, it's only this one. This is the only one that deals with angles. Got it? Okay, come back over here. So this, the second angle of the triangle is 15 degrees more than the first angle. I'm going to write that. It's a comparison statement. Brother has told me. Anytime they're comparing one thing to another, I'm going to write it out, drop down, translate it. Can somebody read it to me? <laughs> At home, has a triangle backyard. The second angle of the triangle is 15 degrees, more than the first angle. The third angle is 10 you're good, you're good, you're good. More than the first angle. This is the only one I want to deal with right now. Okay, okay all eyes up here. Come on, watch this. You'll want to watch this, or you're going to be struggling tonight. The second angle. What are we going to call that? That's A2, because it's the second angle. Subscript. Sub means under. Submarine. Under the sea. Under the sea. Sebastian, man, he had something to say about that. Okay? <laughs> Subscript means under writing. Writing under the letters. That's not math. When it's up, it's called superscript, right? Superman. Above man. Super means above. Sub means under. Superscript is exponents. That's math. Sub is underwriting. It means more of the English language. So A sub 2 means my second angle. That's it. Okay? So don't worry about that. It's not mathematical. Of a triangle. Of a triangle is a prepositional phrase. So I circled it. You can get rid of it. Of doesn't mean multiply in this instance. Goodbye. Is. What does is mean? 15 degrees more. How do I say that? 15. What? What's more than? It's plus. It's a plus, right? It's not a more than sign. It means I'm adding that to it. Remember, if it was less than, it would come on the opposite end because less than always translates opposite. The first angle. What's the first angle? One. Angle one. All right? So now we have to define what's angle one, what's angle two, what's angle three. So everybody, what's angle one? What's angle one? And why is it X? One, two, three. We always start with X. Repeat. We always start with X. Louder. We always start with X. What's angle one, Fetchers? Why? Because we always start with X. Because we always start with X. And then what's angle two? What's angle two? Uh, ten. Fifteen. Fifteen. Plus. A1, which is X. X. Hey, you guys are. Stick with me here, okay? 
So we only have one angle left to figure out. Agreed? Yes. Let's read the next sentence, the third angle. Somebody read that to me, the third angle. The third angle is 10 degrees more than three times the first angle. Three times? Yeah, the first angle, x. OK, look at this. <coughs> Why am I writing this out? Because Brother Rich told me to. It's a comparison statement. They're comparing the third angle to the first angle. So I'm going to write it all out, drop down, translate. What's the third angle? What are you going to call that? Hurry. 8, 3. Eight, three. Is? Equals. equals. 10 is 10. More than? Plus. Plus. 3 times is? 3 yeah. times. X. First angle, which is? X. X. What's angle 3? 10 plus 3X. 10 plus 3X. We cool? Yeah. Can we plug these three into this? Yes or no? Yeah. So 180 equals, what's angle one? X. X. Because? We always start with X. Thank you. What's angle two? 15 plus X. 15 plus X. What's angle three? 10 plus 3 X. 10 plus 3 X. Do you have fractions? No. Parentheses? No. Like terms? Yes. yes. X, X, 3 X makes what? 5 X. 5 X. Uh, 15, 10 makes what? 25, you have found simplicity, subtract 25 from each side, 155 equals 5x, divide by 5, divide by 5, <coughs> what do you get? About 31? 31 equals x. D-V-P-E-R, R stands for? R stands for? Reread. Find the, remember, reread the last sentence in particular. Find <coughs> the angle, angle. Angles. Plural. Is this my final answer here? No. No. This equals 31. This equals 31 plus 15, which equals what? How about 46? Yeah. You guys going to help me here today or what? Okay. <laughs> and this equals 10 plus 3 times 31, which equals 103. Good job. And those are the angles. Good? Moving on. This is the pattern. We're going to build your word problem type, and then we're going to do an example. You guys good? Take pictures if you need to take pictures. We're going to the next page. Consecutive integer. What does the word consecutive mean? In a row. Yeah, one after the other. In order. OK? Can I erase this? Gentile, it's my best man of weight. Yeah, who Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. 2 p.m. class, if you're listening, they challenged me to a push-up contest Monday. Beat them all. Got no winners yet. Oh, he didn't challenge, re -challenge you yet. Yeah, you can re-challenge, man. Any day, any time. It's not right now, because we got a lot to do. But Friday we won't be here, so next week. Yeah, come on, man. I mean, when the old man's whooping on y'all, it's time to work out, man. Let's go. Let's go. I'll give 100 bucks if one of the ladies beats me. <laughs> that's extra incentivization. That's not sexism. That's, I'm saying, hey, if a girl beats me, that's even better. I'll drop a hondo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Are you guys having a good day today? Woo. Yeah, woo. We're doing word problems like Fetzno. <laughs> okay. All right. Next word problem type. Consecutive integer. With each present, with each progressive word problem, the identifiers get a little more challenging to recognize. If they have the word consecutive, that makes it super easy, all right? But they gotta have that word, the word consecutive. But what does the word mean? It means one after the other. So if the story is about things that really are 
in order, you know, after each other, then they might not use the word consecutive. I mean, it is assumed that two pages on a book that face each other are what? Consecutive, right? So you can have a word problem that says the sum of two facing pages in your textbook is 571. What are the page numbers? Right, something like that, yeah. We're gonna have problems in the test where it's like, the, if, we're gonna, if we get an answer on one, it's gonna be used in the next, and the next. No. Question. That would be considered consecutive, right? Like one after. No. <coughs> the answer to your question is no. I think. <laughs> I don't know either. Okay, you guys good? All right. Pick a number, any number. Five. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 47. 35. 30. 37. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First of all, it needs to be an integer, so no decimals, no fractions. Second of all, the larger the number, you know, the more we have to deal with, but I'm fine. 33,462. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> we gotta hurry, guys. 25. We have, you have four more word prop types to go over. What number? 25. 25, okay, let's do 25, all right? Everybody, what's the next consecutive number after 25? 26. 26, and after that? 27. Okay, all right, so you're gonna write 25, 26, and 27 here. Make sense? Yeah. You glad we didn't do the 43,000 one right now? Maybe. Okay. 25, 26, 27. Pick any integer. What's the next consecutive? And the next. 25, 26, 27. We cool? Okay. Now, it says, what is the difference between integer 1 and 2? What's the difference between integer 1 and 2? What's their difference? One. one. Okay, the difference equals 1. And what is the difference between uh, 1 and 3? What's their difference? Two. two. It equals 2. Okay. So that's what you're writing right here. Look up here. The difference between integer 1 and 2 is 1, and the difference between 1 and 3 is 2. How do I represent these as variables? How do I represent these as variables? Okay, so look at this. If I always, if I want to say, no matter what number I pick, whether it's 25, 43,000, 17, whatever the fetch you want, how do I represent the first one? What's the first one? X. On Y. Because we always start with X. And that's why that's written right there. Because we always start with X. Okay, you cool? All right. Look up here, if the difference between this one and this one is always one, so that's a plus one and that's a plus two, right? What's the second one gonna be? It's gonna be x plus one. Think about it for a second, look up here. The first one was 25, what's 25 plus one? 26. 26, ding, ding, ding. Pick another number, any number? 43. 43, 43 plus one makes? 44. See, it works, right? All right, what's the difference between this one and this one? So what's our third one? What's our third one? X plus, plus, two. Two. plus two, right? What's 25 plus two? 27. 27, what's 43 plus two? 45, right? We cool? Yeah. We cool. So that's what you're writing here. X, look up here, X, X plus one, X plus two. So right here, right here, look at this. I want you to write X, X plus one, and X plus two. Right there, just right there. Leave the rest of it blank. What is the given? The given is not the plan, it's actually the variables. Okay, it's the variables. Look at the first problem. My four NBA final seat tickets are consecutive numbers, and their sum is 54. What are the ticket numbers? Think about this for a second. I have four tickets. I have tick number one, I have tick number two, I have tick number three, and I have tick number four. And the sum of them, well, that equals their sum. Sum means to add them, agreed? Yeah. The sum of the ticket numbers equals what? What's the sum? What did it say in that problem? 54. And what's my first one gonna be? X. It's X! Everybody should be saying that loud and proud. Why? Because we always start with X. And they're consecutive, so what's the next one? The second ticket is what? X plus two. X plus one. Oh, wait, it's <laughs> Guys. X plus one. If my first ticket's 11, what's the next one? 12. It's 12, and the next one? And the next one? I'm not growing impatient with you, I'm just telling you, we have limited time, and I, and I want you to think right now, okay? Okay? So what is the one after X? It's right here. X plus one. X plus one. What's the next one? X plus, X plus two. What's the next one? X plus, X plus four. No, three. it's X plus three, okay? Okay, look up here. So this comes down, this comes down, this comes down, right? But the 
second ticket, the third, I'm sorry, the second ticket, third ticket, fourth ticket. It doesn't matter if I have four, five, six, whatever consecutive, it's one after the other. We good? Do you have fractions? No. Parentheses? No. Like terms? Yes. Bet you X, 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 X. How many X's? Four. four X. One, two, and three makes six. six equals 54. We subtract six. We subtract six. We get four X equals 48. We divide by four. We divide by four. We get X equals 12. They asked me in this problem right here, it says, what are the ticket numbers? Numbers. Numbers. Which is plural, which means, is that my final answer? No. No, the answer is what? 12, 13, 14, 15. We cool? Okay. I want you to do something for me right now, right here. I want you to write X right here, write X right there. You got it? Yeah, yeah. And under second, I want you to write X plus two. And the next one, I want you to write X plus four. Write that down right now, because I'm going to move this page. You good? X, X plus two, X plus four. You got that down? You've now filled in that chart. We got to hustle. Go to the next page. Okay. Pick any odd integer. Give me one. What? Five. I like five. Let's just do five. Okay. <coughs> what is the next odd integer? Seven. Seven. And after that? Nine. Give me an even. Six. Four. Six. What's the next one? <laughs> Eight. Ten. Ten. Please look up here. Come on. If this is X, what is the difference between five and seven? What's the difference between two, five two. and seven? Two. It's two. What's the difference between six and eight? Two. What? They're fetching the same. What's the difference between five and nine? Four. And the difference between six and ten? Four. What? They're fetching the same. People think that the difference between odd numbers would be odd, like one, three, five, seven, and the difference between even numbers would be even, like two, four, six. But they're not. They are the same. And it's two, four, six, eight between them all. So sometimes these problems ask you about consecutive even or odd integers. So look up here. We just did, this should be 5, 7, 9, this should be 6, 8, 10, and then it says, what's the difference between 1 and 2? It's 2, and the difference between 1 and 3? It's 4, and 1 and 2 is 2, 1 and 3 it's 4, and so our first one is x, our second one is, what's our second one going to be? If the first one is x, what is the second one going to be if it's odd or even? X plus 2. X plus 2. And our third one is going to be? X plus 4. And that is what you're writing right here. Let's do this problem. The ages of my three daughters are consecutive, what? Even integers. The sum of their ages is 78. What are their ages? Okay. All right. Let's look up here again. Okay. We're doing this problem. Okay, DVPE. Okay, I got three daughters. Yes. Yes. And uh, it's consecutive even. That's more information I need. And the sum is what? Seventy-eight. Sum of the ages equals seventy-eight. So I have daughter one plus daughter two plus daughter three. And this is going to be. This one's going to be X. X plus. What's this one going to be? X plus 2. It is going to be X plus 2. Thank you. And the next one is going to be X plus 4. 4 equals their sum, which is 78. X and X and X make 3, three X plus 2 and 4 six. make 6, six equals 78. I subtract 6, subtract 6. I get 3X equals 78. I divide by 3, 72. divide by 3, and I get X equals 24. <coughs> yeah, it's 72, but it still is the correct answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. So it said, what are their ages? Ages. Okay. Ages. So is that the right answer? No. no? What are their ages? 24, 26, 28. 24, 26, 28. You guys cool? Okay. We're going to do one more. Grace, after they leave, we're going to keep videoing. Is that cool? You got time for that? Yep. We're going to go through all of these, and then you guys can watch the rest on video, okay? The next one is called the two-part problem. So there's two on this page, okay? The two-part problem, can I erase the left board? Can I erase the left board over here? You guys cool? Yeah. The two-part problem, well, these ones are weird, but they're easy, but they're weird. Whenever something's easy, it becomes weirder. It's like it's so easy, it becomes hard. Um... 
The two-part problem, the given, <coughs> the given in the two-part problem is the plan, and it is a formula, and here's the formula. P sub 1 plus P sub 2 equals P sub total, which means my first part plus my second part equals the sum total of parts. Pretty simple equation. It's like saying 1 plus 1 equals 2. Um, what's the identifier? What's the identifier? Are you filling this in your box? Hello? I'm not yes. drawing the box. You guys can just fill it in. The identifier. So this problem is a story about a hole being cut, divided, organized, broken, etc. into two parts. That's the bottom line. A 96 inch piece of wood is cut into two pieces. There you go. You got a hole being cut into two parts. Most people when they read this problem they assume the board is being cut in half. Don't do that. There are so many ways this board can be cut. Don't assume it's being cut in half because it's not. A 96 inch piece of wood is cut into two pieces. One piece is 18 inches longer than the other. Notice the word length is in here. Did you hear that? There's a comparison statement in here. People could think this is a geometry problem, but it's not because a geometry <laughs> problem has to have a measurement, perimeter, area, volume. None of that's in here. That's why we put the double star by the measurement ones on geometry because you will occasionally see something like this. Find the lengths of the pieces. Pieces. So we're getting both. Not always both, but this one we're going to get both. DVPE, D, V, P, E. What's my plan? What's my plan? P1 plus P2 equals P total. Okay? So we got to figure out what's P1 and what's P2. P1 is about midnight. P2, about 8 o'clock in the morning. Anyways. Um, <laughs> funny. Anyways. Dad jokes. Okay, bad jokes. All right. So we got a 96 inch piece of wood. That's my total, right? Yeah. So my total equals 96. Uh, one piece is 16 inches or 18 inches longer than the other. So what's my first piece? X. Because? There you go, fetchers. And the other one is 18 plus X or X plus 18 because it's 18 inches longer. Can we plug these in? Yeah. X plus X plus 18 equals what? It equals 96. Now, I always get some super smart young man or young woman in class that says, Brother Rich, we're going to lose an eighth of an inch to sawdust when we cut this. And I love that person because I'm a construction person and I think the same way, but this book is not accounting for that. So don't go there, okay? <laughs> okay. You guys are awesome. All right, so we end up with 2x plus 18 equals 96. We subtract 18, we subtract 18, and we get 2x equals, what's 96 minus 18? Help me, I'm tired. Uh, 78. 78 is exactly true. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and x equals 39 inches. Yes? Yeah. Okay. What's the other piece? Because they wanted to know. So part 1 equals 39 inches, or piece 1. Piece two equals 18 plus that, which is 57 inches. Okay? 39 plus 18 makes 57. We get that, yep. Because you just plug it back in here, right? Where x plus 18 makes part two. Last, I want to do this one. If you want to, if you need to go, go, go quietly, but if you want to stay, I'm gonna do this. And then I'm actually gonna teach the final one. But you guys are cool. Non-geometric formula problems. Um, so any formula that exists that's not a geometry formula, they can create a word problem around it. And one of the ones that you're going to see is the average formula. So there's going to be an em emphasis on that. You're going to see the average formula multiple times for the rest of the semester. So I'm going to quickly do this. So any non-geometric formula. So I just want to say, so, so like 
distance formula. Distance equals rate times time. Average formula, big A equals A plus B plus C, dot, 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 divided by the number of items, right? That's the average formula. Okay, things like that. Any of those could be in there. So we're going to go ahead and on this one where it says um, the plan equals the formula, example, big A average equals you know, item one plus item two plus item three, dot, 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 all divided by the number of I's, okay? That is the average formula. An example would be big A equals A plus B plus C, all divided by three, right? And we've played with that formula in solving formulas. Um, the identifier, these problems are super easy to identify because it is the name of the formula. So like the word average, and what's another word for average? Mean, yep, it's mean. If either of those words existed in the problem, then it would be an average, an average formula problem. So let's go ahead and do this uh, problem real quick. It's, it's kind of a fun one. Uh, it helps you figure out your grade um, in any instance, um, I believe. One of our students averaged a 93 on their first three exams, all right? So this big A equals 93. So we're, we're data variable plan equation, right? The first score was 100, all right? So test one equals 100, all right? So this is my data and my variable, understood? My plan, not there yet. Uh, the second score was seven less than the third score. What were the exam two and three scores? What were the exam two and three scores? All right, so look up here. We have a test two and we have a test three, all right? One of these is X. You're like, wait a minute, I thought we always started with X. Well, they gave you 100 for the first one. When we say we always start with X, X is where we build from. We always start at the foundation of a building, right? We don't start building on the roof. We start at the foundation. That's why we start with X. So which one of these is gonna be X? Look up here, it says the second score was seven less than the third score. Second score, seven less than third score. So which one's gonna be X? It is the third. Okay, this is gonna be X, and the second score is gonna be seven less than that, so X minus seven. If you got it wrong and you said test two was X, this was X minus seven, it would make no difference. Because you're adding them all up regardless and taking the average. You would have the same test, just in a different order. You'd still get the same answer. How many tests total? Three. So our average equals test one plus test two plus test three, all divided by what? Three. three. And so we're going to fill this in. And I'm going to come over here just because we're running out of space here a little bit. Uh, and, and people can't see in the corner. So I'm just going to write this. So big A equals test one plus test two plus test three, all divided by three. Big A, what's our average? 93. It's 93. We already got that from the problem. Very good. Uh, test one? 100. 100. Test two? Uh, X minus seven. Yeah, X minus seven. Test three? X. X. All divided by three. three. Okay, so we end up here with 93 equals, what's 100 minus seven? That's like terms, 93. And x and x makes plus two x, agreed? All divided by three. Do I have fractions? Yes, yes I do. What's my LCD? It is three. So I'm gonna multiply three times this side and three times this side. How many terms in this right here? How many terms? Three. How many terms? Three. Here, right here, how many terms? One, because it's all over one denominator. We went over this a lot last week. Remember this? These are gone. And so I end up with three times 93 is 297, okay? So 297 equals 93 plus 2x. We good? I'm going to subtract 93 from each side. I end up with 204. Yes or no? 93 times 3. No, I'm, I'm losing my mind here. Sorry. 279. 279, thank you. Brother Rich. One dyslexic. 279. 
minus 93. What's 279 minus 93? 186. 186 equals 2x. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. What's 186 divided by 2? It is 93. Okay. So the question was, what were the exam 2 and 3 scores? 2 and 3 scores. But we know exam 3 was 93, agreed? But this one is 93 minus 7, which equals what? 86. Those are your exam 2 and 3 scores. Okay? Okay. You guys uh, can slowly, quietly leave. I'm going to do this last one. If you want to stick around, you can stick around for it. If you have time, if you don't, don't worry. But uh, we're going to go over this. I'm going to go to the far left board here. Talking about simple arithmetic problems. So simple arithmetic problems are the hardest to recognize and easiest to do. Hardest to recognize and the easiest to do. Um, in your homework, you're going to see all these word problem types. The simple arithmetic problem, here's the deal, why it's the hardest to recognize. Uh, the identifier, you ready for this? It's super frustrating. It's none of the other. <laughs> all right? It's just, it doesn't have a geometric shape in it, doesn't have a percent sign in it, you know, it's none of the others. Um, kind of frustrating. The given, I don't have a lot to give you here either. You are going to simply add, subtract, multiply, or divide the numbers. That's the beauty of it is it's not super complex, but there's not a whole lot to give you there. When there's not a whole lot to give you, you have to do what more? Think. You have to think more. Yep. These are the thinkers, okay? And thinkers are stinkers, okay? Because sometimes when you have to think, it's really kind of challenging. This is an easier one. There's definitely one or two in the book that are challenging uh, in your homework. Recently, the yearly cost for a cell phone plan averaged $1,368. So $1,368 is the average cost per year. Question is, how much is that per month? Okay, so what do we do? Divide by 12, right? And so you're like, oh, these are easy. Yeah, I think they can be. So go ahead, do 1368 divided by 12. What do you get on your calculator, please? Somebody, what was that? 114. Yeah, it's $114 per month. Okay, so the cell phone plan average to be $114 per month. Hard or easy? It's easy, but sometimes these can get a little bit extra tricky, yeah, okay? So let's go ahead in conclusion here and, and really quick <clears throat> look at our homework. So that covers everything. So if you look at your, your homework tonight in 2.7, it doesn't label what the problems are. You have to problem identify. Is it geometry? Is it consecutive integer? Is it a two-part problem? Okay. Is it a simple arithmetic problem? There are exactly 13 problems and a couple of cumulative exercise retro problems, and then there are exactly 12 extra credits. Almost as much extra credit as there is in there. 12 times 3 is 36 points. You know I'm going to give you 25 bonus points if you do them all. You guys have some extra time to do this. Good luck. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.